Hi there, and welcome to an introduction to the Auto Tools, AutoConf, AutoMake, and LibTool. This presentation is a basic how to about the Auto Tools so that you can use the Auto Tools in simple cases, you can handle common error messages, and so that other information about the Auto Tools will make some sense. It's intended for software developers who already know how to use the command line on a Unix like system to develop software, things like Shell and Make. So, what are the Auto Tools? What do they do? Well, the Auto Tools is simply a conventional name for AutoConf, AutoMake, LibTool, and a few other various related tools. The Auto Tools are used by software developers, particularly if they're developing in C and C++, to create or distribute automatically buildable source code for a variety of Unix like systems. The Auto Tools make it easy to support portability. Source code packages can just build for a variety of systems, be it all the various Linux distributions, the star BSDs such as FreeBSD, OpenBSD, NetBSD, Mac OS, Android, and so on. Uh, they provide common build facilities that users really do depend on, things like make install, the ability to select tools like CC equals for the C compiler, being able to select destinations for installations, things like the prefix. Uh, you can use the dester, which is absolutely vital for packaging. Uh, you can do v vpath builds, cross compilations, config.site. Basically, auto tools make it much easier to support all these common build facilities. And also, if you're using C or C, the auto tools provides automatic dependency generation. To help understand the Auto Tools, it first helps to understand what users who might have to compile software would typically do. Typically, users would type in dot slash configure, and that will probe the system and from that information generate a make file. Then the user will type in make, and then the user will type in make install. There are various conventional options and so on for this. Auto Tools makes it easier to support this since the developers can simply create configure.ac and makefile.am files. Those two files are run through AutoConf and AutoMake respectively and generate a configure file and another file called makefile.in which is used by configure to generate the makefile. AutoConf, AutoMake and other tools related to them are conventionally called the Auto Tools and typically invoked by running a program called auto reconf that runs them in the right order. So let's start with a trivial example. In file configure.ac and the .ac stands for autoconf, we can put in two simple commands. One, we can say ac underscore init which initializes autoconf and give it some parameters. In this case the name of the program we'll call it hello and the version number 0.01 Notice the parameters are in square brackets. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And finally, ac underscore output, that's the required final line in configure.ac file. It outputs the results in the right places. Once we create that configure.ac file, we can then create the configure file by running on the command line autoreconf space dash i. The dash i just means create or install any support files that are needed. Once configure is created from configure.ac using autoreconf-i, we can run it. It won't do much, but you can run the resulting configure. So let's see how this actually works. First of all, I'm going to create a little git repository that will create the directory as well. Of course, there's nothing in it, at least nothing on the git, git stuff. So let's create a configure.ac file. Again, notice the square brackets around the parameters. And we'll want to 
make sure that that's tracked. You'll notice, of course, there's only one file we've created. But now let's run autoreconf-i. And you'll notice that it's created the configure file. So let's create a little cache. Now, it won't do much, but we can run the configure program. And there it is. The configure.ac file is written in a special language. It's really just a born shell script that's processed by the M4 macroprocessor. But usually configure.ac is almost entirely just using pre-created definitions to, created by autoconf. The sharp character is still the combat character though. Key style rules due to M4's use are, first of all, you need to bracket your parameters with square brackets. They're needed in a surprising number of places and it's best to always do it. With one exception, integers, you don't need them for integers. Everything else, do it. Second of all, white space matters. White space before a parameter is okay. They're ignored outside the square brackets. But do not put white space before the macro invocations opening paren, if there is one. And no white space after the parameters, in other words, before a comma or closing paren. Uh, they'll be considered part of the parameter. Here's a better configure.ac file. This one has a lot more information. Among other things, it's requiring autoconf version 2.68 or greater. You want to require newer versions because a lot has changed over the years. Config.sourster says is a basically a safety check. It says this particular file must exist. Uh, the uh, configure headers stores a lot of information in a config.h file. The augsdir command down here basically puts a lot of auxiliary files that uh, the auto tools create there and basically keeps your top directory a little cleaner. am underscore init automake initializes the automake system. We'll talk about that in a moment. And so on. And again, at the very end, you'll notice the ac underscore output. Right before it, there's an ac underscore prog cc that finds and probes a c compiler. And this ac config files make file from earlier uh, we're going to generate a makefile.in and this says take the makefile.in as part of configure and generate a config a makefile from it. There are lots of other things you could stick in a configure.ac file depending on what kind of things your program needs. For example, you could say ac underscore prog underscore cxx to find a C++ compiler, underscore lex to find a flex or a lex, yak find a bison or a yak. The autoconf manual has a lot more information about this. The GNU Autoconf Archive also has a large set of predefined Autoconf macros. If the one's already available, don't do what you need. We're going to need a program, so let's use Hello World. Here's a very simple, trivial Hello World program, in C in this case. We also need a makefile.am. The .am stands for input to automake. Now, makefile.am is actually just a makefile, but assignments to variables that meet certain name patterns will also generate code in the resulting makefile. In this particular case, we're starting with bin underscore programs equals hello. Bin underscore programs is a variable that will list programs that will be installed in the bin directory, identified by the binder variable in make. The list to the right of the equal sign is the list of targets. Once you have a target, you can list other information about that target. For example, hello underscore sources lists the source files needed to generate that target hello. So how do we use this example? Well, of course, we create all these files, in particular configure.ac, makefile.am, and now you can generate configure your makefile.in and so on by typing autoreconf-i. Be careful to say autoreconf, not autoconf. Autoreconf calls autoconf and other programs. First time try it, it won't work because there'll be a required readme and so on, which you'll need to create and check in. Then you need to build the program once your autoreconf actually works. You need to call the configure that autoreconf created, and then call make, which will use the make file that configure created. After that, you can just rerun make for further changes. You don't need to reprobe your system every time. Presumably, your system isn't changing like that. 
Once you've finished with Make, you can try out some of the new auto-generated capabilities. You can think, do things like Make Install, Make Uninstall, do them with the tester to redirect where they install and uninstall to. You can use Make Dist to create a distribution tarball. You can use Make Dist Check to check your results before you release it to your unsuspecting users. So let's see this. I've already pre-created that configure.ac file so you don't have to watch me type it. Here's what it contains. I've also already typed the hello.c file so you can see what that contains. Uh, this is of course a new file as far as our as far as Git is concerned, so we will add that to the list of files that we'll track. Now, we need to create the makefile.am. That's a pretty trivial file, so we will just type that in. bin underscore programs, hello, and the sources, the source files for hello, in this case just hello.c. Again, we will add that to the list of files that we're going to be tracking. Now, let's try autoreconf-i. This is going to fail. Why does it fail? Well, the reason is that because of the configuration options that we've given it, it's requiring certain files to exist that we haven't created. Um, we could change those, but frankly, you want those files, so we'll just add them. If you look at the list above, these are the files that it needs to create. So I'll just put that into a shell variable and then I can type in touch and touch them all. And we'll let Git know about those too. Notice that it did create uh, a copying file with the GNU General Public License version 3. I'm fine with that license, but if that's not the license that you want, then obviously replace it with the license you do want. Now we can run autoreconf and it'll work. Create a configure and now it will do some probing. Now I can do make and now we can actually run hello world. Hello. Now what's interesting now is that we can actually do a lot more than we could before. I'm going to first of all create a little temporary directory so I can do some interesting things. Now I can do things like use dester and do make install. Look at that. I can now make install. Did it work? Let's look at the files. Yes, it did. It installed make uh, hello into that new directory I created, user local bin. I can also do a make uninstall. and you'll notice that the hello has now disappeared. I can also make a tarball. And that worked. I can also create a tarball and check it to make sure that other recipients would be able to manage it and it looks great. So I'm going to commit this version inside Git.